Hello, I'm on a holiday break in the Highlands of Scotland. So I'm trying to film this and I didn't prepare to film. I brought loads of books. And then on my way out, I thought, mm, will I pack in the microphone? Thought, no, I won't. So I'm recording using the wee microphone that's on these headphones. And I hope that will work because of course, once I started reading the books I had with me, I wanted to talk about them, I wanted to discuss them, and especially because I'm enjoying too, and I want to say, get them, read them, they're fab. So the first book I have is Anita Luce, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, and this is actually two books in one from Penguin and it's got the sequel But They Marry Brunettes. Anita Lewis, fabulous. So it's an, such an enjoyable read. The whole book is written in the character of a blonde gold digger who collects gentlemen and their gifts of jewellery and in the book she basically goes across Europe wreaking financial havoc in her wake. Um, it's written from her point of view, the words are misspelt, she has funny ways of describing things, funny ways of talking, and it's just delightful. Absolutely f hilarious. She's got things like the Eiffel Tower, and she spells it out like I fool, and so on. You can still read it, but the amazing thing is that the lady who wrote it, Anita Luce, was a brilliant screenwriter, and the whole thing started as a personal joke. So, oh, excuse me, this is me, my hand being the tripod, I'm just going to change it. If I can, oh, let's give it a rest. So, <clears throat> oh, I can see this video is going to have lots of cuts when I go home. Um, although you might have some nice cutaway shots of ducks just to make up for it. There's a shy duck heading his head. Oh no, she's vlogging. Quick duck. Duck and cover. Oh no, is she still filming? Oh no. Start. Anita Luce writes a little chapter on how it was written, but she doesn't call it anything boring like that, how I wrote this book. It's called The Biography of a Novel. And she writes that she was on this train journey and there was a whole group of people who were making films because she was a screenwriter. And she suddenly began to realise that one of the ladies in the party who was an actress was getting huge amounts of attention. And if she dropped a novel, um, all the men in the party would try and lift it up for her and give to her back to her whereas Anita herself was struggling with luggage luggages on on the rack putting them up and down without any interest whatsoever from the gentleman and she thought why and then she realized that the actress was blonde and she Anita was brunette and then it brought back this memory that she had a friend H.L. Mencken H.L. Mencken let me see if I get this name right and she was trying to get his attention but he was absolutely devoted to someone who turned out to be blonde and a dumb blonde that whereas H.L. Mencken was incredibly smart and Anita Luce herself, one of the sharpest pencils in the box, couldn't understand it and then thinking back from the train she realised what had been going on all along and that there was a definite attraction of men to blondes. So she wrote this book from the perspective of a woman who is a blonde is not particularly smart and she's just sat on the train and wrote a little kind of sketch for fun stuck it in her suitcase because they were on this journey to go to work and she was going from the east coast to west coast of America the train pulled into the station it was time to get up and leave thought no more about it for about five or six months and then it came to light again and she thought oh this is funny and she typed it up and sent it off to her friend H.L. Mencken as a kind of joke against him. He read it, loved it, immediately said this needs to be in the magazine, can't be in the magazine I'm editing, and why don't you try it with um, 
Harper's Bazaar. So she did and the editor said, this is great. We're definitely going to publish and it's a series, so more, please. <laughs> so something that grew out of being a few pages was becoming longer by the minute. But it was a massive, massive success. And a friend of hers who was a publisher said, would you like to have some published for you know, Christmas for giving to friends and things? And Anita said, yeah, that would be a good idea. And she did. Um, and that immediately sold out. Then they had a second edition of thousands more. And it sold out immediately. And it ran to many, many, many printings because it was so popular. So, and you can see why. You just read it and you laugh because you, the woman who describes it all has such a disarming and straight to the point view of she wants money out of any encounter, any situation. That is her goal. And she says, someone kissing your hat, the back of your hand is very sentimental, but a diamond and sapphire base bracelet lasts forever. Um, and that kind of line and the whole attitude went into the film, which I'm now going to have to see because we had Marilyn Monroe playing the part of Flora Lee singing Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, memorable. Um, but I'm interested in reading the book. I read it first, enjoyed it immensely, and I'm now going to look at the film and see what there is there. But the book itself has references to film um, because that's what she knew, that's what Anita Luce knew, and she could write about it in a funny way. And it's charming. It's such a quick read. It's a tiny short book. And you can read it in a couple of hours. And just have a little laugh. So the original story was written in 1920s. And published. And this version has been published by Penguin. And it's got original illustrations, like this, with little cartoons, and this is how it's introduced. Gentlemen prefer blondes. The illuminating diary of a professional lady, and but gentlemen marry brunettes, and eat it loose, intimately illustrated by Ralph Barton. So gentlemen prefer blondes is only 120 pages, goes by in a blink, and it's written like the diary in the voice of Lorelei Lee, which is hilarious. And that's part of the reason why it's such a great, fun read, is she sustains the voice of this girl who puts words together um, in not in not very expressive way, and yet the person who's writing it is Anita Lewis, but you never see her directly in the wording. Um, she's making you laugh, and you know why she's making you laugh. She's got things like, um, Lorelei goes is taken to Germany to München to Munich because the gentleman she's meeting at the time informed that she absolutely has to see the art which is called Kunst in German so she's obviously making a play on words there but she mentions it so often you kind of go okay I've got the joke I've got the joke and art is spelled K-U-N-T-Z but um, it's obvious what it could be taken to mean instead in one delightful passage, they're in London and they meet the Prince of Wales. And this is what Lorelei has to say about him. The Prince of Wales is really wonderful. I mean, even if he was not a prince, he would be wonderful. Because even if he was not a prince, he would be able to make his living playing the ukulele if he had a little more practice. And so she dances with the Prince of Wales. And the next thing is her... Um, friend and accompany her on her journeys Dorothy gets to dance with him and this I like but Dorothy will never learn how to act in front of a prince because she handed me her fan and she said hold this while I slip a new page into English history right in front of the Prince of Wales love it yeah there's little surprises along the way and the way it's written and it's written like a diary written by this adventurous so and it is like a series of adventures and different characters and her plans and how to make money. 
Now I have to say that the second book is also included, The But Gentleman, Mary Burnett's. And I find the story for a companion is really different. She is a girl who has a really horrible time with a guy who is setting himself out to be making sure that girls don't fall into disrepute, but the way he treats them is horrible. He's incredibly predatory and it's particularly nasty to read about the way the men are treating her and actually, yeah, it's just horrible. So that's the start of her story and then it goes on to be more light. But it's not as frothy as the first one because Laura Lee is still writing the story but she's now writing about a third person. She's writing about her friend and companion Dorothy. Whereas Laura Lai writing about herself. It's a lot more direct and it's in her own voice and it's hilarious. But it's a bit worth reading for a laugh. I think one of the things I would love to point out from the Anita Lewis book is the way she writes that she had the idea, she grabbed some paper and a pen, she wrote, she wrote while she was on a train going from one place to another and I know one person who encourages writers who says that it's deadly to actually get into the habit of saying I must be in my usual writing place and other writers such as P.G. Woodhouse would write and uh, they would get on the boat to go from UK to America and they would write the guts of a novel on the journey <laughs> when it would take about six weeks maybe to sail or I'm not sure but weeks anyway it was not maybe it's 10 days but it um, it was a certain amount of time and you just got on with the writing no matter where you were and that's such a great idea not to feel too tied to saying I must have a certain place to write in um, yeah I think that's really encouraging grab the idea while it's fresh write it and even a private joke, write something for an audience of a friend who you know it's going to intrigue, interest or scare if you like to write scare stories. And then take it and send it to them. And if they respond really um, warmly and enjoy it, maybe there's another audience for it. Maybe there's a magazine you could send it to. Or make it into something longer, make it a short story, make it to a long short story, make it something else. If you can make an interesting character, then there is potential always for a series, a series of adventures. <laughs>